they would do Wonder Twin Powers Activate, and they would fist bump. <laughs> Wonder Twin Powers. Yeah, and then they would, like... That, that happened several sunset. times, I think, in several episodes. Really no one's listening. <laughs> it's Biden. It's Black Friday. People are supposed to be out. They've got Shopping, these right? sales on MWB shit. Okay. So it is Black Friday, right? Yeah. People are supposed to be shopping or not shopping. I don't know. Diane was shopping yesterday online. I think there was this whole movement about not shopping. All right. Oh, shit, <laughs> All right. Welcome, welcome <laughs> to uh, Gateway Open Office Hours on Black Friday, uh, November something or other, uh, 2016. Is it the 25th? I don't know. Um, yeah, it is. And, happy anniversary, uh, yeah, Mom happy, and happy day after <laughs> Thanksgiving. Uh, as always, you can follow us. I think you click some kind of button that says follow or like or something to get notified when we, uh, when we go live. Uh, I'm your host, Carter Laren, by the way. Uh, I'm with Ben Larson, uh, obviously both from Gateway. Hey, everybody. And uh, what else can you do? Oh, you can uh, use the hashtag GatewayOH on Twitter, maybe uh, maybe on Facebook, I don't know, uh, to ask us questions. We're, we wanted to keep it casual, which is why I'm the, I'm the intro host this time. So, um, But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Casual Welcome. because Welcome, we're everyone. both recovering from copious amounts of turkey stuffing. I am. Green beans, Brussels sprouts. You had the torch pass coin. to you this week. We did. We year. hosted. Yeah. That was crazy. How was it? It was good. A little tense, but it everything went relatively smoothly. The I so I was at my friend's house and uh everyone got high after turkey and it was it was really <laughs> good. <laughs> so we didn't. <laughs> so it made Thanksgiving pleasant. I think that would have made there were no fights. <laughs> <laughs> it might have yeah. with with my crowd. It might have made Thanksgiving a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, this we were, no one. There was like no one's parents were there. Yeah. So, um, anyway, welcome everyone. Uh, let's let's jump into talking about actual stuff. Stuff. All right. Uh, so we uh we did um wait are you showing the you did not showing the turkey in the background Ben I'm very sad about I'll that I'll go back to the turkey okay thank you, thank you. um okay you can go back to the coma dog now too. It's so cute. Everyone loves puppies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, custom development. So we this week for us at Gateway was uh, mostly focused on customer development, although we do a lot of things every week. But customer development was kind of the main thing. Mm -hmm. um, it was a short week. Uh, obviously, most people are out uh, yesterday and today. But uh, we had Java Jamey come in and do a day-long customer development session with, with our founders. Uh, Javid's been a mentor. And Sam McAfee, too. Oh, yes, thank you, and yeah. Sam McAfee. Um, is it McAfee or McAfee? Oh, dear. Hmm. Yeah. Sam, who's a great guy, <laughs> was in. He can <laughs> yell at us on Twitter about how to pronounce his name. If he's watching. Um, yeah, I'm sure he's not watching. Uh, anyway, th it was great. They did a, they did a day-long session with the cohort, and um, I think maybe we should start by just kind of talking about why we do so one of the questions uh i think you brought up that someone asked was like I, aren't i past customer development stage like oh yes my favorite question yeah um do you want to like why are we doing customer development well we we talked about this a little bit last week right with the the launch of gateway radar and in talking to sarah um you know customer development 
is something that you do to truly understand your customer and why you are creating the product that you're creating. Um, if you're just creating what's in your head, who knows if anyone's going to use it. I mean, it's great for a hobby. Like if you just love coding or, or love creating and you just want to create something, not necessarily sell it, then fine, just go do that. But if you actually want to create something that people are going to buy, that you're going to scale, that's going to actually impact the world, um, then you need to make sure you have some customers. Um, and that's what customer development is for. And so we are kicking people out of the office. We're bringing in people like uh, Javed to come in and talk about it. Um, how to engage your customers, who are the customers, et cetera. So, uh, I mean, this is a related question is like, how do I know when I'm done with customer development? Yes. Um, my, my pithy answer was uh, when Google buys you, uh, <laughs> then, then you're done with customer development. Yeah. Um, but I'm at, but there's some truth to that. And, and what I mean by that is, uh, you know, things are, when you're a startup until you're, demonstrating that you've got a super profitable business um you kind of should always be doing some customer development yeah yeah you're you're never done with customer development right um i i think that uh what javin and sam were really pointing out was that like anytime there's a question anytime something comes up anytime you're building an assumption or an assumption into your company get out there and talk to customers try to figure it out um and you know a lot of people I see a lot of first-time entrepreneurs um, going out and trying to prove that they have a good concept. They're always going out and be like, would you like to use an app that right, does right. this? Would you validate my idea yeah. and make me feel loved? Would you tell me my baby right. is beautiful Right, is essentially what they're asking. Um, and most people, you know, most people are willing to lie to your face and be like, yeah, it's a beautiful baby. Right. Um, they aren't going to tell you your idea sucks. Like we commonly do. I was gonna say, actually, that's the that's most of the value that I feel like we bring often is just right. saying that your idea sucks. Or yeah, something it doesn't make us best friends all the time, but you know, right? Um, I think people come to to realize well, it mean, it's good meaning. So let's talk about what customer development is for a minute, sure. because um, I think maybe people aren't clear. Yeah. Um, and I don't. I actually haven't run this by you, so I'm not sure how you think about it. But I'm sure we're on the same. What, page. what I, <laughs> I, I probably have said it sometimes, so you've probably already heard it. Um, you know, so what I think of customer development as is the very first kind of traction you can have. Mm -hmm. so people talk about traction all the time in a business, and my definition of traction is basically the removal of assumptions. Yes. Right. So your business is built on a whole list of assumptions. And traction is just uh, removing some. So I assume that people will pay blankety blank for this. Like, oh, they are. Mm -hmm. Great. That assumption's been validated. I assume that, you know, it'll grow at this rate. Great. It is. Right. But those are assumptions that uh, people typically, when they think of traction, they think of like users or eyeballs or, um, you know, churn rate or something that's um, a v very measurable and very um, data driven from a product perspective. Like, here's my product. Here's the data around my product. Right. But before you have a product and before you have that data, you can still get um, some form of traction. And that's what I call customer development, which is basically here are the things that I'm assuming about people. Mm -hmm. And, oh, look, I'm checking these off. Like this, this assumption is validated yep. through some customer development. This one is too, and this one is too. Um, it doesn't mean that that necessarily means you'll have a successful product, but it's a step towards yeah. validation. Well, I mean, you know, something that we've we've become very accustomed to talking about, and you know, I, I remember hearing Adeo talk about this. I've heard you talk about it in a number of ways, um, but your job as a startup founder is to find ways to poke holes in your company or to kill your company every day. Like, if you think everything's smooth sailing, you don't have your eyes on the horizon. You don't know what like is coming down the pipeline. What is what are the assumptions that your company is built on, and what can you do to prove those out? Um, and that's why like customer development never ends, right? It's, um, there's always something that is popping up. There's something that's changing the landscape, especially in the cannabis industry. The, the landscape is changing every day, every week. Um, and you gotta be doing things to make sure that your company is going to survive, like what's coming down the pipeline. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I mean, let's talk about some of the common problems that we see with customer development, uh, sure. because a lot of times people do view it like you're saying as, oh, I'm going to go validate my idea. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of times even when I 
bring up customer development to founders who I think are actually quite sophisticated and have had some traction, maybe even had some funding and like I would expect to kind of know these things. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk about customer development and they're, they'll be like, oh yeah, I asked people if they would buy this and they said yes or whatever, yeah. like totally shitty questions, right, that, does, that were asked. Does this mean I get to change to my favorite slide now? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. For the first rule of customer <laughs> development is. Yeah. Oh wait, one more look at Food Coma Puppy because okay. it's so cute. Now your favorite slide. Okay. <laughs> Fight Club. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, then you're making me feel really old. Um, but the first rule of Fight Club is that you don't talk about Fight Club. And so if we were to compare this to customer development, I would say that the first rule of customer development is that you don't talk about your company. Right, or um, your product. Or your product. Right. And you know, I was, uh, I was guilty of this in my first startup. I'd go out, I'd talk to hundreds of people. But every time I was talking about what I was doing and what I was making and, and how it was gonna be so much better than everything else out there. And you got a lot of attaboys. I got a lot of validation. It was yeah. just like, yes, this is awesome. Right. And I'm like, oh, this feels so good. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was really, it was just terrible. I, I wasn't like really getting to the crux of the problem. It was like pointless validation. Yeah. The thing that I think that makes customer development particularly difficult, especially for engineers, I think, and, and people who aren't. Um, normally dealing with a lot of human psychology mm -hmm. is it's very psychologically driven. Um, and yep. you don't realize how much people uh, lie to you all the yeah. time and are perfectly willing to lie to you. Right. Um, if for, um, and, and out of kindness, not out of malice. Yeah, they just don't want right? to be the bad guy. Yeah. Right. So, um, hey, would you buy this for 10 bucks? Like, absolutely. <laughs> you know? But then when it's like, okay, give me 10 bucks. It's, oh, well, not right now. Yeah. Like, like they, they, you know, they, they step back from... Sure. Uh, from the flattery. So how do you go about doing customer development? What are the kind of questions you should ask? I mean, someone, actually one of our questions was like, like, you know, what kind of questions, like what questions do I ask? How do I, how do I well, do this? Even before we get there, um, maybe we should talk about who are you asking? Great. Um, that was actually another question. Maybe I should have read it first. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, it, it's, it, you know, you have one of the, the key assumptions that you have when you're creating something is who's going to be using it. And so your first job is to go out and talk to the people that you think will be using this, right? Um, and this doesn't have to do just with like a tech product, like a software or a hardware app or anything like that. This could be an edible or anything like that. So um, go out and find those people, identify where they are, where they hang out, uh, the you know, the, the publications that they read, whatever it takes to really kind of like target where they are. I don't know, maybe your target demographic hangs out at Starbucks, so maybe you should be going to over to Starbucks and be doing your your uh, your customer development. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, you're you're making me want to bring up, like, kind of gone a tangent a little bit, but I think sure. we, need to, we hit it. <laughs> um, when you're talking about who, um, in specifically in cannabis, so we had part of the customer development workshop on Monday, was it Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday, uh, was some people went out and they and they went out on the street to talk to people in the middle mm -hmm. of the day. And uh, and a bunch of people went over to, well, I'll say two people making infused products went over to a dispensary. Um, and they kind of hung out at a local dispensary and asked some people questions. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the guys was very, uh, is very social and affable, and he was kind of the easy, you know, easy for him to break the ice. Yep. Um, and so the other one kind of tagged along and asked questions. Mm -hmm. um, but the question really is with cannabis, are those your customers? Hmm. Right? Because Michael was asking this. Hi, Michael, in the back, switching <laughs> camera angles. Michael was asking this earlier today, which is like, well, so the new laws in California, you know, basically you won't really see a lot of uh, recreational, well, you won't really see sales until 2018, right? So you mm -hmm. won't see rec sales until 2018. And um, this m influx of people into the market, that may be your target market. So maybe your target market isn't people who are going to dispensaries today. Hmm. Uh, maybe that's part of your initial market. It's the dispensary visitors of the future. Right. And so maybe yeah. you should be hanging out at Starbucks asking people, not at a dispensary. Yeah. Um, and so even identifying the customer can be a difficult problem. And in cannabis, 
in any market that's growing as quickly as cannabis is, identifying who that future customer is going to be is mm-hmm. is step one. Okay. Um, so that after, was my tangent. That was a great tangent. In fact, it was probably my fault, but we will now go back on track. <laughs> and once you've found those people, what are the questions we ask them, right? And and I mean, all that, I mean, that, that's kind of an open-ended question depending on what the assumptions are that you're trying trying to kill. Um, but one of the most, you know, one of the biggest places to start is just to find out, like, where the person is on the spectrum of of the type of customer that you're dealing with. Like, if you're talking about someone that is um, a cannabis consumer, like, are they a first-time consumer? Are they an intermediate consumer? Are they an iron lung, you know, so to speak? Right. <laughs> um, and just seeing where their baseline is. And you might have a different lining, line of questioning depending on the type of consumer it is. Um, but regardless, everywhere you're going, you, you are trying to understand their behavior, what their desires are, all without ever talking about your company or guiding them in a particular direction. So that's a really good point. I mean, so first you need to kind of categorize who you're talking to. Well, so you're mm-hmm. ma- you're making an overarching point, which I, th- I think keep the conversation casual, which yeah. is super important because if you show up in a white lab coat with a clipboard, no one wants to have an honest <laughs> conversation with you, right? Sure. So, um, you know, keeping the conversation casual um, and the kind of beginning part of the conversation is identifying more about that potential customer right what categories do they fall into what you know Mm -hmm. like just like you said are they an iron lung are they a newbie like where where are they right so that you know who you're talking to um and then after that um it really should be all driven by the cure your curiosity for their problem Mm -hmm. because you're you know generally you're solving a problem in some cases you can say you're creating an opportunity but even in that can be kind of uh spun as solving a problem yeah and so uh you're solving a problem for people and the question isn't will will they like your solution the question isn't um how much will they like your solution or will they buy it or will they do this or that the question is how much of a problem is it really and uh like how how do they solve it now Mm -hmm. right and so step one is putting them in these categories and figuring out what kind of customer they are and step two is like okay now we need to be curious about the problem yeah right do you like your current? So let's say you're a, a vape user. Do you like your current vape? Mm-hmm. Oh, what do you like about your current vape? Okay, great. Like, you know, what's you know what's your favorite thing about it? Like, okay, mm-hmm. how do you use it? Who do you use it with? Okay, like you know, oh oh, you mentioned that was a problem. Like, what you know? Tell me more about that, yeah. right? Um, why don't you like that? It's I don't know. The charge lasts for five minutes, or mm-hmm. you know, whatever it is, right? Why don't you like these features of it? Yeah. Um, and it's really all coming a- out of a mindset of just sheer curiosity to learn about your customer, mm-hmm. um, rather than the, uh, and, and their problems rather than how can I use this to validate my solution? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting. You know, I, I, I think, I think about one of the companies that are in the second cohort and I'm wondering you know, his, his first inclination would probably go talk to cannabis consumers and see if his infused product is something that they would like. Mm. Um, but maybe that's not the main target market that he wants to go after. Maybe he should be going to the coffee shops and be like, is this a product that would attract you if you were you know, going into the cannabis industry? Yeah, that's, um, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, it kind of gets down. It's all tied in. So, so you know. David Bland, Eric Reese are kind of obvious fathers of some of this stuff, mm-hmm. um, and this all ties into you know the lean startup model and 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 the five whys, yep. right? And it's really applying that five why mentality to learning about the problem, sure, sure, and learning about your customers. So not just stopping and saying like, oh, do you like your current vape? No, okay, thanks. Yeah. Now let's change the subject. It's like, no, well, what don't you like about your current vape? Yeah. Oh, oh, you don't like you don't like that uh, it takes ten seconds after you press the button for it to be ready. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you like? Oh, okay. Like you know, like. Yeah. And and, and this it, this particular thing is is why it is so important to get out of the office, as Steve Blank would say, and go and talk to your customers. Right. Sending out a survey, like yeah, you can get some 
good data for, for charts and stuff in your slide deck if you send out a survey or Mechanical Turk or something. But nothing really compares to actually getting out and talking to people because you never know where the conversation is going to lead you. you know? And you have to be truly interested in who that person is and, and what is driving them to make their purchases. That's one of the reasons I think it's really hard to be a founder because we're expecting a lot of a founder, right? I mean, a lot yeah. of founders that are good at executing and maybe doing the engineering don't want to be going out and talking to customers. A lot of people who are good at going out and talk, talking to customers maybe aren't the people that need to be executing. Sure. But really, as a founder, you've got to be doing both. And so you have That's to true. enter those uncomfortable spaces where uh, you don't want to do it, yeah. but you've got to be the person. You can't outsource customer development very well as a startup. You have to do it yourself. That's right. Um, and you know, the, the people that like to stay in the office and, and code and do that kind of stuff, they're often the ones that get to the end of a, of a long session and, and they've coded something that no one's going to use. And it's right. just like a complete waste of time. Right. But also like just the, the soft skills that you gain from going out and actually talking to people. Um, it does make you a better founder when you're able to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and like we said earlier, um, uh, it's an ongoing process. It needs to like customer development isn't something you do at stage one and then right. stop doing. You need to keep doing it. So, so, so a, a defense I have often heard from some founders they, they they like to quote Steve Jobs quoting Henry Ford. Right? It's oh, like right. if I went out and asked people what they they wanted, they would say a faster horse. Right? right? Um, that's bad customer development. You shouldn't be asking what they want. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. You would be an idiot if that's what you asked. Right. So, like, using right. that as an example, you'd be going out and asking them, like, why are they riding a horse? Right. And it's to get from point A to point B. Right. What like, don't they like about the horse? Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 It's um. It's like, sure would you like to lot, get there faster? It? It shits a lot on the street. <laughs> yeah. Do you? Does your family have two horses? Right. Yeah. <laughs> would you like to consolidate to one? So I think we've yeah. had this com not on on not on air, but you and I've had a conversation, uh, maybe actually in front of some uh, other founders in, in another context, but. We've had a Steve Jobs conversation before, and the thing that bothers me about bringing up Steve Jobs as a counter to customer mm -hmm. development is that uh, Steve Jobs had, I mean, decades, literally decades of experience understanding the customer yeah. to the point where he could intuitively know what was what they might want without going out and doing more customer development. Like, yeah. if you threw Steve Jobs into Turkey and said, go sell this new mining equipment to this gold mine, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any gold mines in Turkey, but whatever, like, he would have to do customer development. He doesn't have an intuitive sense of yeah. what Turkish miners need for their, you know, what like, that's not, that skill hadn't been developed. So it's only because he was in the same industry for so long, talking to the same customers for so long, mm -hmm that he got to the point where he could intuitively say, no, no, don't ask anyone, like, they want this, trust me. Yeah. Like, it's because he knew. He also was using somewhat of a uh, cheat that Phil Libin suggests, actually, for first-time founders, What's um, that? which I don't uh, endorse or not endorse, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I was just watching an episode where you said that about Phil. <laughs> like, this might be the same thing. I think okay. I might have said this before. Okay. Right, so he has said, um, first-time founders should build a product for which they are the user. Mm. And the reason that he recommends that is it makes customer development easier because you, if you and your team are all users of the product, then you naturally know much much more easily you kind of yeah. know what whether it's working or not and whether it's solving your problem. But I was, don't think that completely works. That, but, that was easy for Phil to say with building Evernote because there were a lot of people in his position, right? There's a lot of kind of technically centered founders that like, Right. I mean, yeah. So that's the other thing. If it's you and your friends and you and your friends happen to be the only people in the world who care about this, then it's not a great idea. Right. If it's you and your friends and there's a lot of people like you, yeah. and you, which is why I'm, I said there's a little bit of a caveat to his advice there. But I do think um, certainly it's easier to build a product for which you are the target market if it's your first time, um, if, if there's a lot of yous in the world, right? Right. I still would suggest doing customer development primarily to validate that there's a lot of views. Yes. Right? <laughs> like, okay, am yeah. I crazy and weird or does everyone have this problem? Yeah, like right? if you came to me and said, I want to create a first time dungeon master application. Uh, those exist, I found some <laughs> uh, on my iPad. Of course actually. they do, yeah. of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah. Uh, it's easy to make assumptions about, you know, and, and a lot of times, 
Uh, I mean, this happens in every, I think, in every area, but the Bay Area in particular is a little bit of a bubble, mm-hmm. right? And, and also in the cannabis community, it's been very insular for, for quite a long time. It's expanding now. But you can kind of make a statement like, oh, well, my friends and I all love this. Yeah. Great. That's a very small percentage of the market. I, th- right? I, th- I think something that highlighted the, the most recently was going to the marijuana business conference in, in Vegas like 10,000 people, you had a cross section yeah. that was very diverse, um, you know, everywhere from dreadlocks and, and tie-dye suits. Yeah, yeah. to suits. Yeah. And I, I would almost argue that there were more suits there than there was. I felt like there were a lot of suits there, yeah. Yeah, which might be shocking to, to some people. Looking at some of the products that are still being created, I think it would be shocking for people to see that. Sure, yeah. And, and, and again, I don't. I don't want to disparage any particular group. Like maybe they, maybe there is a big market for that, and maybe there are mm-hmm. a lot of people who who will be, you know, like you and your friends or whatever. But you do need to validate it, right? You need to go make sure that, like, yes, the people coming into the market will will like this, or there's a large enough, you know, constituency here that my business yeah. works, um, and not just kind of assume there's, you know, there's some. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to touch on the election, but like this was uh, not just this election. I've heard this. Uh, actually, several elections. I'm, I'm old, right? Several elections. There's been various groups where people have said, "Well, I don't know anyone who voted for insert winning candidate." Right. Right. And it's like, yeah, because you, of course you don't, because <laughs> you, you talk to other people like yourself. Like, <laughs> yeah. but that's always true. Every election, yeah. there's always groups who are like, "I don't know anyone who voted for that." Well, yeah, I, I know. Yeah. Right. Um. But but people did, and so, you know, that that attitude of like realizing that there are different people out there in the world and you know your product while it may resonate with you you know there may be few very few yeah. units in the world okay anyway, so we beat, we beat a dead horse with that definitely um or a dead model t but i i do want to kind of like shift it into the kind of like the latter stage you know so you've gone out you've done your initial validation you've created a product um now you're kind of going on into this like lifespan of your product like yeah. how do you keep implementing customer development um and why is it important? And, you know, one of the things that occurred to me this past week when I was doing a pitch boot camp um, with Founder Institute, uh, you know, I was talking about the importance of the pitch and, and your ability to reduce risk. Um, your ability to go out and raise money is all about reducing risk, right? That's what traction's all about. And that's traction. It's just reducing risk. That's exactly. all it is. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And, um, you know, anytime you are proposing a new direction for your company or a new feature or something like that, um, hopefully it's coming through customer development. Um, And if you can actually go out and say that, that's going to make people feel a lot more comfortable with a new direction. Be Like, I went out and I talked to our customer base, and this is what they're asking for, and this is the solution that we're going to do to address that. Yeah, you know, it's one of the things that reminds me, like, uh, one, one of the things angel investors really love to hear, and I've heard it not many times, but a few times, um, is you hear it from a, it, this happens often in like a small business who's doing something like maybe a service provider mm-hmm. or their whatever. Um, and they, they have a, they end up with a product that they didn't intend, right? They're like, oh, well, like we were doing this thing and then suddenly a bunch of people wanted it. So we just, I don't know, we just started doing more and then yeah. like more people wanted it. So we, we did more and like that's music to your ears as yeah. an investor. Cause it's like, oh shit, like they're not sitting in an ivory tower deciding what people want. Yep. They were pulled into the market by their customers. Like that's demand and yep. that's a great signal. Well, that was like one of, one of the, the quintessential stories that kind of highlights that I feel was Flickr. Do you, do you know the Flickr story? I don't think I do. It's, no. It started out as kind of a social video game. Kay. And there was this feature that they had added where people were allowed to share photos with each other because it was kind of like one of those immersive kind of type of videos, video games. And so people really started latching onto this. They started uploading photos and then they were sharing it with other people that they had connected with in the game. And so the founders are just like, wow, people are really using this. Maybe we should explore this. Through the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Building a video game is very hard. Yeah, yeah. It's and it only has like so, so long of a shelf life. Um, and then it evolved into Flickr. Um, wow into like pure photo sharing that's cool i did not know that yeah yeah um you know i want to i was just looking in my my notebook here of questions uh which are hard to read because my handwriting is horrible but um but it's your handwriting yeah (laughs) Uh, 
why I type. Um, we did have some questions about like people viewing customer development as more of a software thing, and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I'm doing edibles or I'm doing hardware, so uh, the customer development model doesn't really apply to me as much. And I mm -hmm. wonder if I obviously I have opinions about everything. I wonder if you could share your thoughts. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's just, well. to, I mean, no offense to whoever said it, but that's just a dumb question. I mean, it's, uh, I would argue that it's even more important because there are a lot more upfront costs required uh, with hardware, consumer packaged goods and whatnot. There's a lot of work that you can do on the front end before you produce anything, before you do a 50,000 print run on, on packaging. Um, so you better well I'm trying not to swear. <laughs> like, no, no. like, what, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. What happened to you? We're, we're not drunk in Vegas this time, so. Um, You've never had to be drunk to swear. I know. I've tried to get better. Here, I know. Fuck this shit, Ben. <laughs> swear. I'll swear for you. Um, get out of the <laughs> office and go talk to people. <laughs> I'm failing to get you to swear. All right. I really am trying to turn a new leaf. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. This is like a temporary thing, I swear. I have a suspicion, Ben. Um, we'll talk about that later. Um, am, am, am I am I close to what your feelings are? Yeah, no, it's I mean. exactly those are exactly my feelings. I mean, uh, software actually needs customer development the least. Not that you shouldn't do it, but um, because you can produce quickly and get data. Yeah, you and can use be like, that. "Oops, yeah, fuck that. Let's let's change. It's already out." As long as you're doing a lean development, not like yeah. some super long waterfall. Exactly right. If you're following the lean model, you can iterate. Um, Iterating on like, oh, I manufactured this, you know, thirty thousand dollar piece of hardware as my prototype, and it turns out to not be what anyone wants. Yeah, that's a little harder <laughs> to iterate on. Been nice. To, been would have been good to do a bunch of customer totally. development first. Totally. Um. So often, also, also we had um. Uh, actually, during I don't I think you missed these office hours, but we were having office hours with a founder, uh, one of our founders this week uh, after the customer development session, and um. I think a lot of uh, a lot of founders get very intimidated by building an MVP. I know this isn't totally related to customer mm -hmm. development, but it, it kind of is. We kind of we figured out like what some of the pain points were for his potential customers, and we were talking about an MVP. And I could see he was like, "Oh man, like I got to write all that software just to get this <laughs> to work," and blah blah blah. And and I had to like s calm him down. I'm like, actually, no. Like, look, all this is just done by you by hand, yeah. if you're faking it on the back end, yes. you just need this like front piece. We're just trying to validate that people want to interact in this particular way, yeah. and you do all this like legwork on the back. It's horribly inefficient and it would never scale. Yeah. And um, and he hadn't, he was thinking fr of a, from a mindset of, well, this will never work for a large number of people, therefore I can't do this hmm. this way without building the software. Like it would never, I couldn't possibly do it other than writing software. Right. And I was like, no, 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 no. You're, you're only you're going to have 100 people doing this. Yes. At the most, yeah. you will let 100 people on the platform while you're doing this, right? Yeah. Um, and then if this works, then you invest the money. That's what we call closed alpha. alpha. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so understanding that, uh, you know, as you learn from customer development, the next thing you do is to come, kind of come up with a uh, car tire and chicken wire kind mm -hmm. of MVP that yeah. – there's a lot of um, let's, I'll use another analogy. Like there's a, like a lot of man behind the curtain yep. stuff where yeah. it, well, it looks like it's software, but actually it's really just sending you an email and you're going and doing a bunch of work and typing some shit in and it's popping up on their screen later and it's like yeah. So I, I want to hammer this home a little bit. We've talked about the manual delivery um, yeah quite often. Um, if you have an idea and you've just been thinking about bringing something to market, but you think there's a lot of coding that's involved. Really, just try to go out, put it out there. I don't know. Go to Squarespace. I swear to God, we should get a, a sponsorship from Squarespace at one point. Um, Jason does, and we're better looking. That's true. He might have greater reach. Eh. Anyways, build a Squarespace site. Make it look real. Have the form, the fields that you need for people to to request your service. I don't know. Limit the number of people there. Either way try to try to just make it happen like do a manual delivery like if you're if you're doing a food delivery platform and you and you think that's what people want go out and actually deliver food to people um yeah maybe it's only 2500 people um but if you can never even get to that 25 or 100 people then you're probably on to the fact that it's not going to be a successful company 
There's nothing right. greater than being stretched to your limits and having to find ways to automate your process. Right. And then actually as an entrepreneur, you'll know um, the points that are, that are ca causing the greatest pain and what is required to be automated first. Exactly. And that's the best way to grow a company in my eyes. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that uh, narrative. So um, just I'm just looking through some common, we were talking about some common, common problems. We've talked about not talking about the solution. Uh, we've talked kind of about uh, asking unbiased questions, right? Uh, do you like it? Uh -huh. Would you buy it? Uh, those are unbiased questions. I guess one one uh, thing that we haven't talked about, but I just want to throw out throw out there is as you're doing customer development, realizing that positive feedback is generally useless, uh -huh. right? Um, negative feedback matters, but positive feedback is you can kind of throw it away. Yeah. Um, so you shouldn't really be talking about your solution, but if for some reason like it ventures into territory near there and they kind of start saying like, I really love this or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like all that's useless. Yeah. Um, and when you actually have a product, positive feedback is generally useless, right? You, so you want the negative feedback when you're, when you're asking people. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's, it's hard to decipher what negative feedback is worth pursuing. Right. Um, yeah. Because in your head as a founder, it's like, Oh, but all these other people had really good feedback. This person's just crazy. Like, you know, what what is it about what that person is saying that is worth pursuing, or is it just any negative feedback and you kind of like want to pursue it? And I think you want to understand where the negative feed again. We're back to almost the five whys. Like, oh, you didn't sure. like it. Why? And if it if you ask a bunch of whys and it turns out, you know, because I'm a crazy asshole and I never liked you in the first place. Like, okay, well, <laughs> I can maybe not worry about that part. Yeah. But if it turns out well. Because there's this really there's this other piece of software that like I'm trying to integrate the, your solution with, and mm -hmm. it doesn't work at all. And actually, like there's a lot of people that are, would have this problem. They just don't talk to you about it because they just yeah. stop using your thing or whatever it is. It's like oh, you, you, suddenly oh, you haven't integrated with Salesforce, and 90% of the people use right, it. Right, yeah. right. So um, yeah, it depends. But you have to peel the layers of the onion back to peel the out. onion back. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about. I, we can wrap it up pretty soon because it's the day after Thanksgiving, and mm. uh, I don't know. Um, Turkey, cold turkey sandwiches to you have eat. cold turkey sandwiches waiting for you. Um, <laughs> I do want to just mention a couple customer development resources. Oh. Um, so one, sorry, I'm looking over here. I want to see, there's a person who I think might have texted us a question. So I just want to verify that they did not text us a question. I'm, you know, what the hell? No, he's asking about the Gateway Christmas party. Do we have to tell anyone about that? Yes. Uh, he asked what the date was and I can't answer. Oh, when is the date? December is 9th. Okay. Um, <laughs> December 9th is the gateway. There you go. Uh, our first anniversary um, party. Yeah. Speakeasy themed. Um, As always. Gateway is one year old and five days, um, which yeah. I'm very thankful for. It's been yeah. it's been a great I would, year. I would toast, but I'm out of my cheers. Not um, water. Yeah. Um, all right, a couple customer development resources. December 9th, uh, go to gatewayturns1.eventbrite.com. Oh, really? Password. You get your URLs. <laughs> nice. There's a password associated too, so oh, okay. I don't know. Maybe I should lift the thing. Get in touch with us. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we mentioned Job and Jume. He did a great job. Job and Sam did a great job. McAfee. McAfee. Mm. Uh, they did a great job coming in. They did an, uh, a day-long customer development workshop. Obviously, that's not someone that um, something that startups can necessarily hire him to do for them. Right. But uh, he's a great resource. Uh, Justin Wilcox runs customerdevlabs.com. Yeah. Awesome. Justin is an awesome resource. There's a lot of stuff there you can read. Ball of energy. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a ball of energy. <laughs> uh, he actually recommended Javid originally, which is how we found Javid. Um, and... Um, and actually, I'm I have I'm in love with this book by this guy Rob Fitzpatrick, um, out of the UK, called <laughs> here. Put it, which camera? Here we'll put it on this camera. This is a better camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go. Woo um, it's called the Mom Test, and uh, you know, it's basically about. It's a very practical. Um, it's a very very practical tactical guide to how to actually do customer development, mm -hmm. what kinds of questions to ask, what kind of questions not mm -hmm. to ask. Um, this is a book that we hand out to all the founders that come through Gateway. Um, you know, We don't get anything for plugging this book, so maybe, yeah. maybe we should, but I'm plugging the book anyway. It's a good, good book. book. 
Uh, the other thing I like about it is founders are generally busy, and it's not like a tome, mm-hmm. right? I love David Blank, but right, it's like not reading one of those. It's just like yeah. it's a quick pamphlet, read. Practi- yeah. practically. It's super easy and fast to read. So um, anything else we need to address on, on Black Friday other than go out and buy some discounted weed? <sighs> Man. Um, no, I just wanted uh, to thank, you know, in the theme of Thanksgiving, um, you know, thank everyone in our community. Um and everyone that's been a part of our journey over the last year. Um, We've had a lot of help from a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, and a speci- special thanks to Mike for really jumping in and kicking ass over the last few weeks. Um, you know, to Sarah Brown, Gateway Radar, I know it's gonna be success. She's um, just an incredible resource when it comes to working with brands and, and helping them get the voice of the customer. Um, you know, Corinne and the, the Elevate team, um, you know, all the content producers out there, you, you're a huge part of my day. So like Shay Gunther at, at Marijuana Today Daily, C- Chris Lotlicker of Marijuana Today, uh, Sh- Seth Adler of Can Economy, uh, Brandon and Eric from, from Investing in Cannabis. Like, um, it's not easy. You know, we, we just put ourselves live and, and don't really care about our production. Well, we have all low that standards, much. but if you have high standards, <laughs> but if you have high standards, difficult. go on, go on yeah. uh, to your podcast app and, and make sure you listen to those guys. They have a lot, a lot of cool content coming out. So, um, yeah, December 9th is our one year anniversary, our second speakeasy party because speakeasy is the theme until we're federally legalized. Yep. Which, uh, Glad we don't have to talk about that, but uh, yeah, we won't get. There's still some battles there. to do at the federal level, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, um, but ahead of us. But uh, yeah, yeah. Keep supporting uh, the movement. SSDP upstairs. Uh, love you guys. Um, yeah, DPA. All everyone. You guys are doing a great job. All right. Th- oh, and thanks to Iris for our unicorn. It's I don't beautiful. know if the camera can see here. Yeah, it's poking up there. There we go. There we go. Our There's the unicorn. Beautiful uh, unicorn. Iris gifted us with the unicorn. Uh, the first of many, hopefully. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Uh, remember to follow us. Uh, there's some kind of button. Maybe subscribe. Is that the yeah. button? Uh, there, I think there is a subscribe button. Subscribe button on Facebook. You get notified when we go live. You can uh, bug us on Facebook, bug us on Twitter with the hashtag uh, GatewayOH for questions, comments, gripes. Um, yeah. And that's it. Have, have a good Go hit the gym. Yeah. <laughs> get <laughs> off the couch. Go hit the gym and, and, and uh, <laughs> get to work. And get to work. Thanks, everyone. (laughs) Awesome.